Oh, this will be it. Hello, and welcome to Ask the Manager, a series produced out here at Lane College by the broadcast students. My name is David Paul, and along with my colleagues Howard Lepp and Craig Levy, we'll be interviewing Jay West today of the radio station KZEL. And maybe, Jay, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here in this impromptu setting. I don't have the slightest <laughs> idea what you guys are going to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, lo as long as you're uh, at ease, we it's can... It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we had a nice lunch. People should know that we got to know one another. That's true. Yes. It was a good lunch. It was. And, um, Thanks, incidentally. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Let's get right into things here, shall we move along, boys? And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your history, your background in, in radio, and how you came Gee, to Gee, that was a question we weren't going to ask. <laughs> we agreed on that. Just, uh, <laughs> just to start things off. Well, I'm an accident in terms of my own involvement in radio. Um, it was a station that was begun at the University of Oregon by a bunch of University of Oregon students, as well as a couple of others, uh, one of the chief, uh, engineers at KVAL Television here in Eugene in 1969. And, um, I got involved uh, about four months later, uh, just by accident, literally. Um, it went off the air. I had been listening to it. I'd never really been in a radio station before in my life. And uh, from that, uh, K KZEL has evolved into what we are today. And that's how I got involved, by accident. And uh, some of those same people are still with us. Good deal. Yeah, that was uh, December of 1969. And I took over uh, the station uh, eight years ago yesterday. Right. I right. wish you a happy anniversary. Thank you. As we did at lunch. As general manager, uh, do you have basic duties that you do every day? Do you have to take care of certain things? Well, sure. Um, I always view myself as kind of, uh, we talked about this. I don't, I, I'm not an air person, although I am knowledgeable in programming. Programming is one of my really um, strong interests in radio, music news, public affairs, programming, but I am not an air person. I've never pretended to be. I've always tried to have people around that were much better than I at that. And what my role and what I view myself as and have uh, as part of my management philosophy is a facilitator, uh, a person who is going to try and make it possible for the people uh, at the radio station to achieve their maximum potential, whether it's in the area of uh, programming, engineering, sales, Whatever. I mean, that's my job. That's how I view it. Jay, uh, do you have an overall station philosophy uh, regarding your role in the broadcast community? Do you have a commitment to any particular doctrine? Well, now, we are a progressive radio station. That's a term that was coined some years ago in the late 60s by uh, Tom Donahue, who was the founder of so-called progressive radio. My particular philosophy is one of... Um, of free-form progressive radio. In other words, the more live it is and the fewer strictures that you place on people on the air and the more freedom they have to be who they are, uh, the more, I believe, we can stay in touch minute by minute with the audience. At least that's the philosophy. Progressive radio for a long time was thought of as being a political term. It's not. Progressive radio, in our sense, means that we're on the air 24 hours a day and we're constantly evolving and progressing. We've never locked the door at KZEL. It's always, there's always been somebody in that radio station since 1969. And that's what we do. That is, that is our definition. And free form, when I say that, I mean we have uh, somewhere between 15 and 20,000 records in our library. It's one of the best in the Northwest, maybe one of the best in the West Coast. And uh, the people on the air can play anything they want to whenever they want to. The only thing that they have to be aware of is that if the audience isn't listening, and they're in the job of communicating, then they're not doing a very good job of communicating. So there's that give and take between the audience and the people on the air and the music. And we are primarily a music station, although I suppose we have a reputation for doing other things, too, mm -hmm. in the area of news and public affairs. And we'll get into some of that. Politics. <clears throat> right. Why don't you go ahead? KZO is a, uh, a very popular station around town here. It's 100,000 watts, <clears throat> and <clears throat> that's a lot of power. And uh, you talk about free form. 
but somebody's got to pay the bills. And so what approach does KZL take towards selling advertising and uh, radio? Okay, well, we, uh, when we first started, uh, we, we, we had a very difficult time selling our product. For one thing, FM was not established in the market. Uh, the listenership of FM was about 17% of the total market. Today, it's almost 40. Uh, we are primarily responsible for that. If you look back and see the growth, our cells in KPNW FM, we have a beautiful music fo format. They have pretty much attracted the older demographic over to FM, and we, and we were instrumental in bringing the younger demographic from AM radio over to FM in this market. And by the younger dem demographic, I'm talking about the 18 to 34-year-old market, which right now today in Lane County, of the total group of people 18 years old and over in Lane County, 18 to 34 year olds represent 47 percent of that population, of the total adult population. So it's a huge mass of people. And that's always been our position. We were the first radio station in this market to actually position and say, we are after this group of people. And we had a very difficult time with that because um, it's, it's a well-known fact. I mean, uh, we, we used to do some outrageous things that hurt us a lot in our sales effort. It was very unpopular when we came out uh, for the impeachment of Nixon in 1970. Uh, we couldn't sell advertising in this community for two, three, four years. And some people still won't buy from us, okay? Uh, we don't really care about that, okay? It was consistent with positioning on that market and being spokespersons for our own generation of people that were trying to grow and survive here. Right. And uh, there was lots of, it was a, it's a social and a political and a cultural phenomenon this group of people, 18 to 34 year olds, and that's who we position on, that's what we market. And when we say that uh, um, KZEL delivers a certain share of that market, uh, we've been very effective in that respect. We don't deliver all of it, we don't pretend to, but there are a specific group of people, and you're right, there are lots of them, um, that, that, that do listen to us, and that's who we sell. We sell that market, that's who we are. Mm -hmm. Are they, um are they a purchasing type of demographic? Well, yeah, it's 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 pretty well Sometimes recognized people. as being a, this large group it ha has more discretionary income, and uh, it, particularly if you look at uh, uh, home situations, it, it's the forming family age for one thing. Um, generally, uh, for economic reasons as well as others, um, there are two people working in a household, and that's a norm among the 18 to 34 year olds. Hmm. Um, sometimes you have households that are extended families, okay? But uh, young adults, by and large, um, have a lot of purchasing power. You bet. You were talking and about... And it isn't just, uh, excuse me, but it's not just uh, records and stereos right. and stuff. Yeah, I that's... Mean, it's houses and it's lots of stuff. Is it really that It's hard? the largest household durables, for example. It's the largest group of purchasers for household durables. That's interesting. By far. As a matter of fact, 18 to 24. Really? That's... the largest group for... Household durables. I'm talking washing machines. Yeah, appliances, sure, appliances. Right. Know, the I next group is 25, 34. So that's it. Yeah. Well, people yeah. are being a lot different than I, I guess. You're talking about market research and the, how important the audience is. So, how much emphasis does KZEL put on ratings? Well, okay. And maybe you can explain a little what ratings are. All right. Well, ratings, oh, now we're measured twice here in this market, twice a year. And uh, the broadcasters and I was very much involved with this. When I uh, say that we were unpopular, I mean, we, we, we were stereotyped as a specific type of radio station, okay? Unfairly in many respects, and justifiably in many others. I mean, it's no secret. Uh, we were very adamant in our opposition to the war in Vietnam and Nixon, okay? We did that at a, at a time when it was very unpopular, okay? So we were stereotyped. Now, in order to <coughs> establish our credibility, and the credibility of our market. We had to make it possible to provide hard data that people were actually holding that same persuasion and that really enjoyed this wild, crazy new music that now is on everybody's radio <laughs> station, right? But when you talk about um, Years ago. the phenomenon of the Grateful Dead or uh, Bob Dylan is an MOR artist, so is Joan Baez, and, you know, and plus all of the rock and roll, the heavy metal rock and roll out of Britain and the Stones and Led Zeppelin. Very little of that music found its way into the airways before FM, plus the introduction of all the San Francisco music, mm -hmm. and, you know, Hendrix and Joplin and all of that stuff. So uh, we've always tried to uh, establish that. Now, it seemed like the most logical way 
would be to use the established and uh, recognized and the, um, <coughs> the methodology that was there that they would accept, which is the rating services. We Something they can touch. Yeah. In other words, play the game. So we got right in there and we played the game. And um, KPMW and ourselves and KGN to some degree, although they were a little more resistant, were uh, really responsible for getting two Arbitrons a year in this market and having that research come out, right? And having those numbers there because it's helped us a lot. I mean, we can say, look, uh, you know, we're the number four adult market in six, in a radio station in six counties. You know, and there's a lot of radio stations there. And we can say that. And this is a big market, you know, when um, our biggest competition at night, at least in the past five ratings books, has been television. It hasn't been other radio stations. I mean, you talk about seven to midnight, which is supposedly, according to the music business, you know, the time when people listen to the music that sells, the pop music. I mean, we own it. You guys don't get it. KLCC doesn't get, unfortunately, get, get rated. You guys do good. <laughs> Jay, um, there are, I think, 13 commercial licensees in the city of Eugene, Springfield, right. metropolitan area. Well, including Cottage Grove. Okay. Lincoln. And I think Eugene is reported to be about the seventh or eighth most competitive market yeah, in the radio right in this country. Right. With all this competition, with the, uh, with the amount of radio stations in the area, how does a station like Hazel, or how does any station, as far as that go, maintain its viability? Well, how do they operate at a profit? Are they making money? In our case? I mean, it's no secret, uh, the, the published figures. Last year was much better. Uh, let, me, let me give you some figures that are in broadcasting, right? We all have to, every year, we make a report to the Federal Communications Commission. And most of us also report to the NAB. But the figures that they print in broadcasting, they, they come out about nine or 10 months, sometimes 11 months after the close of the year. So last year's figures showed um, a net loss among the eight AM stations of uh, 100 and Eleven thousand dollars, I think. That's way down from the previous year when the eight AMs lost three hundred and seventy-two thousand dollars, which was down from the previous year when they lost three hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars. That's AM. Okay. The uh, FM side was always a loser. Nineteen seventy-five, FM made ninety thousand dollars in this market. Okay. Um, 1976, FM was again a loser. But what had happened on the FM side was that the, the, uh, the overhead, the expenditures, which are also reported, almost doubled. And that accounts for it. But revenues were way up. Profit, there was no profit. So there aren't, there aren't any, you know, we've never really made money. That, you know, we talked about this at lunch. I mean, that, sure, the idea of commercial radio stations, I suppose, is to make, make money, okay? But, you know, there's a, a licensee has to be foolhardy um, to think that that investment is not increasing in value. Mm -hmm. It makes it tough day to day. I mean, we have struggled and struggled and struggled. But, uh, you know, like our people now are, are I think, uh, compensated very, very well in relation to the rest of the market. I mean, we have some of the highest paid people in radio in Eugene. Well, respected more than and maybe in the some past. Some of the most respected. Yeah. Yeah. We, do, you know, it's coming. It's coming. All right, um, promotions. KZL does a lot of promotions from time to time, and we mentioned that we're into the book now, the rating book that is April, April, May, which happens in this market this time of the year, and um, you have to gain audience somehow, or at least you have to. Uh, at least try to see how many people are, are coming your way. So what you do is promotions. Hawkeye's The Good Life, uh, canoe giveaway that you had. You had, uh, what are some of the other things, the whale things? The whale thing, yeah. The whale thing costs us a ton of money. I mean, not only that, we lost numbers. Hopefully that's something. I think it was too specialized, but it doesn't matter because we wanted to do it. It was important. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what we're doing this year. I mean, yeah, obviously we don't question. have any billboards. We don't have any television. We didn't have any the last ratings period either. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out that there's every radio station in town is giving away money and there's cash cash and there's super stickers and right. $59 if I pull you over and all of that stuff is going on and that's cool. And so we decided we're going to take You're that. Next <laughs> week, yeah, next week we're going to have our, we don't want people to forget that May 1st was designated by the com county commissioners first and then the governor of Oregon, Straub, and then Dixie Lee Ray in Washington. And it's because of what we did. I mean, right. it was because of what was going on here. And that KZL started. And 
we're very proud of them. We don't want them to forget. So next week, we're, we're, we've... Uh, we've Bring it to light again? Yeah, we're going to pull people over next week, and if they have a Kazel sticker, we're going to ask them for 96 cents to get <laughs> Oregonians cooperating to protect whales. All right. That's going to be our giveaway. Help. Good. So, uh, and we hope they do. We hope they help us. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure our friends out there so will. So look for a Rolls out there. We've got better Rolls. Is that right? <laughs> Along with uh, promotion, we turn to programming, and uh, Kazel, I guess, as you were talking about, is an evolving station. Yeah. How is programming? Evolved. So you can't, you can't, you can only buy one book. I mean, you can only buy one ratings period unless you really got a lot of money. I mean, uh, th we are consistent. You know, we, in our, I could, if I had, to, well, I was going to bring six, the last six arbitrage, right? Because it's real impressive. Because the consistency is there, and you see that there are real, the serious radio stations in this market. Okay, it's KPNW, AM and FM, and the FM's growing faster than the AM's losing, and the FM's growing. KUGN, again, a situation where it's, it's losing. And they have the massive morning. They have a wonderful morning program with Wendy Ray, you know, and, and Dale Reed, Uncle Fuzzy. And that's, that's the substance of that radio station. It's great radio. And you've got KBDF, which is the top 40 rocker. And you've got uh, now a duel going on between Cater and Keed, okay, for country market. And that's it. That's it. K Sound is coming on real well and it's wonderful I love it because they're the bridge between AM and FM and what's they the last book they had a terrific book but they didn't take anything from us matter of fact we went up see they bring it over from the AM side which is very important we should be higher than 37 percent of the listenership in this market listening to FM in some of the major markets it's as high as 60 percent you know Washington DC Cleveland number one station in Cleveland 12 plus is WMMS a free form progressive station one of just a handful in the country they got an 11-4 share in Cleveland, 12 plus. I mean, it's incredible. And the reason is they are so plugged in to that market. They are so in tune with the people. See, it's programming. That's, you can't promote your way into happiness. You have to have the substance. You've got to be saying something relevant. You've got to know who you're talking to. And that's what we've always tried to do is be right there because we were all, we're in the generation, you know. So we, we stopped being 1834 when I, last year when I turned 35. Now it's 18 to 35. And it's funny now, you're going to, you're, we're, but really, yeah. showing up, we're picking up the 35 to 44 year old, you know, males first, which is... Well, they're growing up from the 60s. Yeah. Well, this is, last book was the first book where we actually had more cumulative listeners that were women than men. Jay, uh, KZL has always built itself uh, in its own promotional uh, programs as a community-oriented radio station. Uh, especially, I think, in the area of news. Speaking of news as a part of programming, how do you see mm -hmm. the role of the news department out at KZEL? Well, I don't know how, 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 how far back you guys go. But there was a time there in, in, uh, in 1969, uh, 70. There were lots of things happening. There was this, it was called a subculture, right? The alternative culture. What it was, a bunch of young adults. Okay? The disenfranchised people that were trying to figure out what how to make sense out of this insanity, all right? And there was a place downtown called the Odyssey Coffee House. Cindy and Bill Wooten and some, the, the contributions they've made to this community across the board are incredible. And the things that have grown out of there, during, during that period, there were two really um, community-oriented that were speaking to that specific group again, okay? It was what came out of there and Kazel. I mean, we were the media, okay? We took the fight in the media for Saturday market when the merchants didn't. Now you try to get them to take Saturday market out of downtown. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, right. huh? Before, I don't know if you remember the hue and cry, but they didn't want all those hippie, right. crazy mm -hmm. people down there. They didn't realize that 30,000 people would be there every weekend. Spending money. See? Really? They got mad when Nancy Harry would want to put them on the courthouse steps. I'll just run through the list if you want. I mean, Saturday market, Renaissance Fair, White Bird Clinic, the support for White Bird Clinic, uh, family shelter house. That's not so much ours, but I was involved. I was one of. I was the first treasurer. Um, you could rent, rent, Did I say Renaissance Fair? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I can't even remember. But all these institutions now that are, they've grown into like very viable community ideas. Okay, that's sure. as much a part as the news and information. I have a joke, you know, that I used to that I used to say that sometimes it's not really a joke. I mean, um, all the news it's fit to slant. We had to be selective in our news because only the only kind of we're not interested. We've never reported murders, for example, right? 
I mean, we, we always try to concentrate on news that relates directly to the interests and the sensibilities of our audience. Now, when I say slant, I mean, we've always had a point of view, too, so people obviously assume that, you know, we don't really, sl we do also do some of the best in-depth reporting, I think, that this town seen in a long time. It's, a, it's interesting how you... Um, but new, we have a lesser emphasis now on news and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, because that, um, there's not as much happening. I mean, now that we don't have Nixon to kick it. By the way, don't buy his book. So you pretty much define the direction of the news department. Um, you just changed format a little bit with that, haven't you? There's something else. I can tell you something else about our news department. We had to tell you... Laudits. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Sherry, yeah. Sherry Roach was the first full-time woman announcer in Oregon radio on KZL in, uh, I think we hired her in August of 1970. Melinda Coates was the first news director, woman. I think John Rochelle was the first black on commercial radio in Oregon. I'm sure there's got to be a couple. That's, a, that's part of our statement, too. You know? Is really? It? That's excellent. Is there a difference between news and public affairs? I know just recently, I, th I believe you uh, put a special program on Paraclot that you got from KSAN or something like that. What does it take to stop your regular programming and uh, put something like that? You have no problem. Well, the most famous one was when we preempted everything for the water hearings and for ran the water wall game. to wall. Uh -huh. I think we might have ripped them off from you guys for a while. <laughs> With we, have <laughs> we have the tapes. We have the gap. <laughs> Yeah, no, we did. We, we just we ran on. That was right after we went 100,000 watts, too. And boy, did we get the calls. And, and that was our biggest growth period. We went from like a 400 when we were operating from the bottom of the valley here. When we finally moved up to the Latin, Latin Heights, we under transmitter. And we started, that's when we started getting numbers, you know. Mm -hmm. But sure, I mean, it's important. If we have something like that, you know, to get people to think about the fact that there are people in this country that are willing to kill their kids so they don't smoke dope mm -hmm. or run the risk of ruining their health, their own children. I mean, that's something we should think about. That that's more important than playing the latest Elvis Costello. God bless him. I think he's great. Jay, uh, we have a few minutes left. I think I'd like to ask about the future. What do you see in the future for KZL, and uh, what direction do you think you're going to be taking? Well, of course, it's, it's also a well-known fact that uh, you know, my I, I feel like my time is uh, I'm I'm due for a change. I've accomplished the things I set out to do at KZL. Okay. And uh, for my own personal sanity, I mean, I'm going to take a rest from this business. <laughs> Is there okay. A... Now, uh, what's happening is, it's really quite wonderful. The people that are buying KZEL, a uh, company called JR, well, there's, there's two young people like myself. We have very similar tastes and interests. And between us, we've got 35 years of radio. And Peter's the oldest. He's 36. Rob will be the active partner. And he'll be... He'll, be, he'll have the largest share of ownership in the two stations. And the nice thing about it is we were able to put together a package which is well capitalized, which will be the first time that it's ever happened uh, that we've been able to operate, you know, with, with, uh, with money in the bank. And uh, we're going to have two of the best, well, we'll uh, given the last couple of rating books, I mean, we own it 12 to 34, and we'll be, we'll, unless somebody comes along and knocks us off. I wish you luck. I wanted Thanks. to ask you a two-part question, um, though we're talking about the future of radio. But I'm getting out. I'm going to take a nap, you know. <laughs> That's their Settle problem. The I phone. only have a little piece anymore, and I'll be a, going on to the world of being a consultant. That's the polite way of saying, don't compete with us. Uh -huh. hey, would that be in the capacity of KBDF? Oh, yeah, sure. Both. Okay, you know, now back to my two-part yeah, question. Okay. Is uh, talking about the future. What about cable radio? And I also want to talk about automated radio. You're talking about how the community is so important and being in contact with the community. Does automation take that in, into part or what? You ever heard an automated system that you couldn't tell was automated? No. Okay, that answers the question. I'm very intrigued with automation, okay? But you can't do a format like ours with automation. I mean, there's, there's no such thing as a progressive automated station. It's absurd. It's, it's, you know, it just doesn't. It, contradiction of terms. But automation is, is neat. I mean, and autom automation is getting more and more sophisticated all the time. And computer systems are going to be, you know, and where you can get a dynamite program director to put together a lot of neat stuff in automation. 
Automation is fine. It's got its place, okay? I'd like to have an automated station sometime, as long as it isn't KZO. <laughs> How about cable radio? Cable is interesting, but cable is, you see, the, the key to radio is to keep it is to keep it active and viable in the community. That's, what, that's why people get licenses, is to serve their community, okay? And, you know, when you start talking about the potential of cable, all right, not just bringing in, you know, eight stations from Portland or 12 from Seattle, but the potential of cable is, uh, you know, that microwave disc dinner, you know, WNEW in New York, are you kidding? <laughs> Okay, now people will say, far out, we could listen to 50 different radio stations. Trouble is, economically, there's a potential there that it's not going to support the local radio stations. And believe me, local radio stations in this market really have the best interest of the community at heart. All different facets, all different points of view, but that's the only reason they're here. We take it real seriously. I mean, you know, there's, uh, there's 11 radio stations that sit around in the broadcast council. Okay, there's only one Eugene station that doesn't participate, and the rest of us get together, and we are, we do some things that really, we talk about the best interests of this community, and we have a lot of things in common, you know, we set aside the fact that we're competitors, and we meet, as a matter of fact, we do our community ascertainment that way. A lot of our That's community true. leaders, we're saving people a lot of time, you know, 12 of us would go out and talk to the mayor, now he can come to us and we can all ask him questions and it's much better. Yeah. <laughs> it's better for everybody. Really? And we have a spirit of cooperation, but yeah, I, the potential for cable, see, that's, that's really sad. I mean, you cannot, you know, you cannot jeopardize that because it's not only a free press, it's also that diversity, you know? If, you know Definitely. Really. Keep those local news departments happening. Keep that diversity. I agree. Jay, for uh, any students of the broadcast media who may be in the viewing audience, do you have any advice? Yeah. Would like to pass along? Well, there are two, stu Make there are stu two schools here in Eugene that are, are actively geared towards broadcasting and radio broadcast programs. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the advice I have is uh, be generalists. Don't uh, get hung up on You better understand. You better understand. If you're going to be a programmer, you better start understanding sales. If you're going to go into sales, you better start being conscious of programming. Because the radio stations aren't going to survive anymore unless they're, unless they're better integrated. Jack of all titles? Well, not jack of all titles. It's understanding. Because the business is getting too sophisticated. OK? I mean, get depth. And don't just be the person that you know, is interested in music. Right. You know, boy, I want to put some good sounds out there, and that's why I want a career in broadcasting, you know? Right. Well, there's a difference between a, a broadcaster and a disc jockey, of course. Yeah, I never had a disc jockey in my life work before me. How much do local artists take effect in this market? Do they get airplay? Uh, We've on always the played. I mean, you ask them. Sure. I mean, we try, you know. But an artist is an artist. I mean, we have a saying, you know, we'll play anything once. From there on, man, it's up to the people. We may try and if we like it a lot, we might shove it down their throats. <laughs> we had to do that with Elvis Costello and all of a sudden they loved it. I thought it was great, yeah. We've done that with a few others too. Gil Scott Heron for one. But that's 1971. Really? Well, we, we're coming to a close here. Maybe you could tell us in a few seconds uh, what direction do you think KZL is uh, going to assume in the future? Well, I'm very optimistic about it. I mean, um, th th it's going to be a viable, changing radio station. Okay. It's going to be out there in the cutting edge, or it isn't going to have what it's got now, which is lots of people listening to it. Well, thank you, thank you for coming, Jay. Thank you, Jay. We've been hey, uh, thanks. Nice to talking to Ask the Manager. My name is David Paul Black, along with uh, Craig Levy and Howard Lepp, and not to say the least, but Jay West. Thanks for coming, Jay. Okay, so well, I've enjoyed it. Lunch okay. was good, too. Really? Listen to radio. Listen to radio. All radio. All radio. radio. Okay.